I was doing me yoga and I got blocked. <laughs> I can't move. I, I got cramp. <laughs> <laughs> but don't just stand there, undo me. <laughs> How long have you been like that? Since four o'clock. <laughs> That means there's no tea ready. Glad we get tea ready looking like this. Well, it could have rolled out there. <laughs> Are you going to undo me? Well, I don't know about that. How much is it worth? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? Well, all right, then. Dim boom, dim boom, dim drive boom. Dim boom, dim boom, drive boom. Hear the word of the Lord. Dim boom, dim boom, dim drive boom. Dim boom, Harold? I see the pound is still buoyant on the international exchange. 2.39 and 16 30 twos. That's a very good improvement, that is. Dim boom, dim boom, dim boom. There's been a lot of forward buying at a German mark. I'll give you a quid. After being out on the Olsen awesome cart all day, coming out to no tea. Two quid. <laughs> 30 bob. Oh, come <laughs> now, father. 30 bob to a man of property. You insult me, Sir Albert. <laughs> yeah. Practical yoga for the business, man. <laughs> well, it's obvious where you've done wrong. You forgot to oil yourself. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it says here that in India, bloke stays like that for weeks on end, without food or water. It allows the mind to become crystal clear in order for one to reach the highest plane of... Transcendental meditation. You experiencing anything like that? No. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not giving it a chance, are you? I mean, you've got to persevere. I think I'll leave you like that for a couple of weeks. Make you feel much better. 35 bob. I bet again. <laughs> I could put you on a little trolley and pull you about. <laughs> oh, that again? I could leave you outside of a tube station with a begging bowl in your hand. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> <laughs> you potty. You're round the twist. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Pins and needles. <laughs> two quid. You, you can have your two quid. Where is it? In me pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Here, you've got about 20 quid in here. 23. <laughs> <laughs> that is naughty. Very naughty. You are supposed to give up all your earthly possessions when you're being a yoga. You could get jumped out of a yoga's union for that. <laughs> I don't think you're taking this book seriously you enough. You got your two quid. And do me. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at you. <laughs> oh. 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 It's not like one of them little dolls that won't fall over. <laughs> I think I'll bang you over on the sideboard and coat you with a coat of gold paint. <laughs> But the great snake god. <laughs> oh, great god, Albert. We bring me here. Oh, do not be angry with her. Oh, send us water for our crop. Oh. <laughs> the great god is angry with us. <laughs> he does not like our simple gifts. Oh, we should have brought the virgin old great one, but we can't find none round here. You yeah, callous little bleeder. All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. No need to lose your temper. You've got no sense of humour, have you? Neither would you. If you've been stuck here for three hours. Let's have a look at you. Right. Right over the hip. Ah! Ah! Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Left down the right. <laughs> Upper dies. <laughs> Never play. In the red corner, we have the ABA heavyweight champion, a great winner. Helmet step two, the white panther. <laughs> At the way this morning, Helmet step toe scaled, five stone, three and three quarter ounces, soaking wet. <laughs> Give off. Oh, you can do it, champ. Don't worry, you can do it. If you end this one, you can take off your vest and turn professional. Leave off. I can rub my own legs. What's the matter with you? What's got into you? You're behaving like a five-year-old. Come at me, that's all. Life has smiled upon me at last. Oh, gold. Another bird. No. <laughs> it's better than that. 
business. The winds of change is blowing through the yard. For the past few weeks, we has been becalmed in the doldrums. But now the glass is dropping. And we're going to go out in the long for the roaring forties. All sheets to the wind. You've bought a boat. I have <laughs> bought a boat, you fool. How about a tickle? What do you mean? Well, while you've been sat here all afternoon contemplating your navel, <laughs> I have, in the course of business, purchased for the niggardly sum of seven pound ten the most exquisite example of the cabinet maker's art that's ever come into this yard. Eh? Where is it? It's stay, stay, sit, sit. <laughs> Get your half fine of blood moving around. <laughs> 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 Not bad. Not bad? Come on, Dad, I'll pay for it. You can let yourself go. The customer's not here. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. What is it? What is it? It's a commode. <laughs> it's an early 19th century commode. Oh, that's reason, see, that is not a shadow of a doubt. See, this old bird, she calls me over to the house, takes me into the front room, there it is. Seven and a half knicker, eh? Well, plus a couple of balloons for her gardener's kids. And she didn't know what it was? No, she had no idea. She thought it was horrible. She couldn't wait to get rid of it. Said it didn't fit in with her inflatable armchairs. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think this is going to fetch at auction? I don't know. Well, I've got to put a reserve of 200 quid on it. As much as that? Look at it. And not a mark on it. The beautiful quality. You sure it's real and not repro? I can't say it's not repro. That's dead right. Well, I've not been going to his GLC antique appreciation evening classes for nothing. <laughs> and just look at it. Shape of the legs, the finish, all the brass work. And the whole piece screams out its intrinsic quality. Yeah, it's a nice piece of furniture. What's it for? What's it for? <laughs> it's a commode. Look. <laughs> There's a Poe in it. <laughs> of course there's a Poe in it. What do you expect to come out to having a bow, right? <laughs> I mean, that is the whole point of it. That is an integral part of the furnishings. I mean, this is the only sanitation they had in those days. Welburn Abbey, Blenheim Palace, they all had bees. That's a very good Poe, that is. <laughs> that is Crown Derby, that is. There's no change. <laughs> I don't know, China haven't been invented. I mean, water closets didn't come in until much later. God blame me, we didn't have one until 1935. <laughs> no, this is all they had in the early 1800s. Even royalty used to use these. Victoria and Albert. Well, you couldn't expect them to use a little wooden shed in the backyard of Buckingham Palace, could you? <laughs> well, where did they keep them then? Well, whenever, wherever, they was most needed. I mean, sometimes that would be on the landing. Or sometimes in the bedroom. And sometimes, if they was having a banquet, they would have them behind a little screen in the dining room. <laughs> that way, if they was uh, having a conversation and they was caught short halfway through the dinner, <laughs> they could go behind the screen and mick, nip back in, in time for the next course. That way, they wouldn't be said in a conversation. <laughs> What a way to behave in the dining room. Dirty devils. <laughs> no, dirty devils. That was Alan Mod. They were all doing it. Oh, this is an important piece, this is. Look at that. On the side of the pole. That's another reason why it's so valuable. What is it? The Prince of Wales' his feathers. <laughs> That's his crest. Is she Dean? Oh, I'll bet this was his own one. <laughs> surprised if this didn't come for the Brighton Pavilion. Oh, yes. Prinny's private privy. <laughs> oh, if that pole could only speak. <laughs> I've seen some sights, I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, apart from him, there would have been Bob Vermeil, Mrs. Fitzherbert, Nelson, a Scarlet Pimpernel. <laughs> All set there, doing a Times crossword puzzle. <laughs> oh, what a prize. I bet some of us will go berserk when they see this. 200 quid, eh? Uh, isn't it amazing? 
The council gives you 50 quid to get a proper one in these days. Well, they're giving it to us, aren't they? A beauty. I've only we could cut a few more items like this, just a bit more often. We could retire. There's only one thing bothers me. What? Well, if it's worth all that much money, it don't seem right only to give a £7.10 for it. What are you talking about? Steptoe and Son have always had the reputation for fair prices. That's how we've got such a good name in the business. And that's why we've got no bleeding money in the bank. <laughs> It's doggy dog in this world. Do unto others before they do unto you. Well, I think it's bordering on dishonesty and I don't like it. Well, nobody cares what you luck. This is mine. Your turn. I would appreciate it if you would not use vets while I'm gone. <laughs> good afternoon. Ah, oh, good afternoon, Mr. Steppo. Yeah. I believe this is your card. Steptoe and Sons, best prices paid for old antiques. That is correct. You buy him or sell him? You called at my house this morning and bought a, a Regency commode for my wife. Did I? I think you did. Seven pounds ten you paid her for it. Yes, well, well, I did purchase an article of furniture which might or might not be, period. Well, it is. Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, is there something wrong? Yes, there is. I'd like to discuss it with you. May I come in? Well, yeah, by all means. In there. Oh, there it is. Thank God you haven't sold it. I'm afraid there's been a mistake. My wife shouldn't have sold you this piece. She didn't know the value of it. Oh, I'm sorry, but that is no concern of mine. She agreed to price. But you took advantage of her. This is a Regency commode. Once the property of the Prince Regent, it originally came from the Brighton Pavilion. Well, you're an antique dealer. You must have known it was worth more than seven pounds ten. Well, whether I did or not, it's uh, besides the point. I mean, I'm in business, Mr... Copeland. Mr Copeland. I just backs my judgment. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. This time it has done. I'm sorry, I don't see how I can help you. This is sharp practice, sir. It's people like you that bring the antique business into disrespect. There, I told you. Shut up. Going on the knocker, I believe it's called. Terrorizing old ladies and innocent housewives into parting with their, with their family heirlooms and paying them a pittance for it. That's a mush. <laughs> you better be careful what you're saying. That's a very serious accusation, that is. I mean, and some of these old ladies, as you call them, they're the biggest con merchants in the world. I mean, bringing out all their Victorian crap and trying to pass it off as Georgian. I've been caught once or twice, I can tell you. I mean, we all have to learn the hard way. You just have to tell your wife to be more careful in the future. Harold, this is no Please. way to... Don't interfere. I'm sorry, Mr. Copeland. Uh, nothing I can do for you. Look, I must have this piece back. Certainly. I'm quite prepared to sell it to you. Sell it to me? I see. Well, I suppose I must offer you a reasonable profit. Fifteen pounds. Oh, come now. I mean, we all know what the piece is worth. So? Sentiment means nothing to you. Market value, I suppose. Oh, very well. I'll not beat about the bush. I want it back. A hundred and fifty pounds. Hell, hundred and fifty pounds. All right, all right. Don't get out of your pram. <laughs> this is worth twice as much as that. It's not doing me no favours. Uh, that's a good price. Now, you put that into an auction. You have to pay commission, and you have to take a chance on what it fetches. A hundred and fifty. Well. To show that I'm a reasonable man, I'll take it. Will you take a check? Certainly. Just write your name and address on a bet. Not a bad profit for a day's work, is it? Well, well, that's the way it goes, isn't it? I shall make arrangements to have the commode collected in the morning. I need no need for that. My son will bring it round today. No, thank you. I prefer to have it handled by experts. Your check, sir. And I warn you, if I hear of you doing anything like this again, I shall report you to the Antique Dealers Association. If I was a member, I would be quite concerned. <laughs> You're a rogue, sir. I'll see myself out. <laughs> Hundred and fifty quid! You ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, no, don't stop that again. You used to have integrity. You used to be an honest dealer. I still am. I've done nothing dishonest. I've been very fair. 
could have made a lot more than that. You could have been satisfied with a reasonable profit. Oh, you do make me laugh, you do, you and your working class morality. You, you don't mind these property millionaires making a fortune, do you, eh? You don't mind them buying an acre of land for nothing and selling it for two million pounds. No, no, you admire that. Oh, he has done well for himself, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. What about that, eh? Knocking down Georgian houses and sticking up modern blocks of offices. That's all right. You can get a knighthood for that. When a bloke like me has it off for once in his life, oh, no, that's all wrong. That's dishonest. Yeah, there's no need to cheat people. What do you mean, cheat people? I paid £7.10 for an article. I sold it for £150. That's 2,000% profit, right? Right. Right. Last week, you bought that suit off that old girl for five bob and you sold it to that Pakistani across the street for a fiver. <laughs> How much profit is there in that? £4.15. Oh, no, there isn't. Two thousand percent are up you for a stop. <laughs> that's not the same thing. Of course that's the same no, thing. No, it's not. Everybody was satisfied with my deal. The Pakistani was delighted. First three-piece Harris Tweed he'd ever worn in his life. You didn't tell him that plus fours had gone out, did you? <laughs> Poor little sod. <laughs> I mean, he's just come over it. I was in our wee dress. I saw him yesterday. Um, he, he had plus fours right down below his knees and bare legs right down to his sandals. <laughs> not ridiculous. Well, he only had to buy himself a pair of long stockings. Anyway, Alec Douglas Hume still wears them. Only when he's out shooting grass, not when he's after a job on the buses. <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. You took advantage of him, so don't get on... Oh, come on, doubt. At least that takes advantage of people what can afford it, what should know better, so they've had a better education than what I've had. I feel no qualms about my dealings with the bourgeoisie. And if I get the chance, I shall whoop it up him again, right? <laughs> I'll go. I just keep your nose out of my business. I don't need you to tell me what's right and what's wrong. Good afternoon. Are you open? Yeah. We never close. <laughs> We're a bit like the windmill, really. <laughs> sure. Well, my name's De Vere, Antiques. Rome and Venice? Yes. I opened out there years ago. That's where the money is. They're buying absolutely everything at the moment, the Italians, as you probably know. Oh, yes, I've seen them in great profusion down the Portobello Road. Yes. Well, I ship to Italy by the lorry load. Twice a year, I come to England to select my pieces. And I always like to take a look round you chaps. Never know what you might have that would interest our Roman friends. Oh, well... They pay top prices, and they're mad about English furniture at the moment. Oh, right? Well, we've got plenty of that. I mean, most of, the rap, m most of the furniture we've got is English. Well, perhaps I might have a look around. Oh, certainly. P please, always a pleasure to do business with the trade. Do, do come in. Thank you. In there. Yeah. Anything to help the export drive? Oh, yes. I say, that's rather bizarre. That's my father. <laughs> oh, <good laughs> my father. This gentleman is an antique dealer from Rome. Mm he Don't look like a wop. I can't let's have a look at the decorum, Father. He's not an eye tie. He's English. He's only operating from Rome. Uh, this is rather amusing. No, I don't think so. I've got a bracket clock, but the bracket's missing. Oh, good heavens. Well, this is incredible. But well, this is exquisite. Well, this is by Hell White. Is it for sale? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> but this is the finest example of a Regency commode I've ever seen. It does have a rather pleasing line to it. I don't believe it. The Prince of Wales' feathers. You realise what that must mean? This was undoubtedly used by the Prince Regent himself. Are you familiar with the commodes in the Brighton Pavilion? Not personally, no. <laughs> but this could quite conceivably be one of them. Remarkable. <laughs> Remarkable. I'll take it. You can't have it. It's already sold. I'll give you £600 for it. £600? Certainly. I already have a customer. Sophia Loren will buy it sight unseen. It's sold. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, it's you. If you don't keep your nose out of my fest, so you're going to need a false set of gums as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sell it. It's against the rules. Don't make me own rules. But shut up. Uh, 
I do beg your pardon. <laughs> my, my father's a little bit old-fashioned about these things. Well, of course, if you have already sold the piece, there's nothing more to be said. I wouldn't want to do anything unethical. Oh, no, 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 no. It's quite all above board. It's just a little mistake. I'm sure it can all be sorted out. Well, I'm very interested in the piece. <laughs> Perhaps if I call back in two days to ascertain if it's for sale? Oh, it will be. It will be. It will be. It will be. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no trouble, I do assure you. Uh, the, the, the man I sold it to, he don't really want it, and his wife can't stand the sight of it. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Well, uh, he, oh, I can assure you, I would not be party to anything unethical. I mean, I value my reputation above all else. As we all do. Yeah, I'll, I'll bite back off him. I'll give him handsome profit. I'm sure it'll be quite amenable. You can tell Mrs. Loren the out is as good as hers. <laughs> if you can establish sole title to the piece, we have a deal. Please do your best to get it. It's a superb example. If necessary, I might even go higher than 600. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Don't worry, I'll get it. I'll get it, I'll get it. You can keep your mouth shut for a stop. <laughs> I thought Roman Fred was coming back for it yesterday. <laughs> so he's a very busy man. I mean, he deals with other people besides me. He's got van loads to get yet. Hey, he's probably out scouring the country. He's probably left the country. What do you mean by that? Well, if he'd been so keen to buy it, he would have been back, wouldn't he? It's cost you a lot of money so far, hasn't it? No, not really. Oh, yes, it has. That first bloke had you by the short and curlies when I came back, didn't he? <laughs> Him with the trash. 150 quid. 350 you had to give him to get it back, hadn't you? How did you know that? I thought you were supposed to have left the room in disgust. He was listening at the key, I wasn't you? Couldn't wait to write the cheque, could you? Well, I was naturally eager to conclude the transaction. Yeah, and you gave cash, too. You made it out for cash. Dicey, that was. No, of course not. I mean, he explained all that. But that was to avoid the possibility of capital gains tax. So that stands you in at uh, £357.10 now. No, it doesn't. No, I'll bank the first cheque for £150 straight away. I mean, that afternoon. I'm not a fool, you know. At this moment in time, that commode has cost me £217.10. And as I'm about shortly to sell it to £600, I'm quite satisfied, thank you. Honestly, you're so dim at times. You really are. You're as thick as a donkey's dongler. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, can you? What? You've been conned. Conned? Oh, rubbish! You have. You've been turned over. They've had your trousers down. They're all in it together. <laughs> oh, oh, God. The burger bought it off. The so-called husband and the Italian bloke. God, blimey, I have to spell it out for you, don't I? Right, look, they got this commode, see? So they wait for somebody to, like you to come by, and the woman calls you and have a look at it. She lets you have it all for, for £7.10, and you think you've got a bargain, right? Now, the first bloke turns up, the husband, all indignant, shouting the odds that you've got a valuable commode that you've only given £7.10 for. And to prove how valuable it is, He's willing to buy it back off you for a hundred and fifty quid. Are oh, you well satisfied? <laughs> now, they move in for the kill. The second bloke turns up, the antique dealer, the expert. He goes all frothy when he sees it. I must have it, I must have it. So he gets all your juices working away by offering you six hundred quid. Four times what you've already sold it for, providing that you can buy it back off the first block. Are you still with me? <laughs> right. Now they've got you. 
You with the little pound size jumping up and down in your eyeballs. <laughs> you can't wait for the first bloke to come back to buy it. Back off him. Greed. That's what they count on. People that want something for nothing. So, first bloke comes back again in the morning. Of course, he don't want to sell. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> You've got to offer him 350 pounds before he agrees to sell. So, you give him a cash check. He nips straight round to the bank, cashes it, and you never see anything of them again. Simple. Like shelling peas. <laughs> and you fell for it. I've never heard so much rubbish in all my life. When did you make that up? Last night. I was doing my yoga, meditating, <laughs> and it come to me in a flash. I thought, they sent him to the cleaners, I thought. <laughs> and served the greedy little bleeder right. <laughs> it's very clever. But you've overlooked two things. I banked the first bloke's cheque for £150, and B, I still have possession of a very valuable Regency commode. Yeah, and you've overlooked two things too. A, I rang up this morning, and that cheque's been bouncing around the bank ever since you put it in. <laughs> and B, while you was out, I had a Bloat round to value that commode. Paint? Seven pound ten. <laughs> Made this year. He's looked at fourteen of them this week. They're doing the district. You've been sucked in, mate, and blown out in bubbles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You've lost three hundred and fifty-seven pound ten, and serve you right. I've no sympathy. It's your own fault. If you hadn't been so greedy, they'd never have been able to work it. They must lives by the sword. I'm fine. But I could have swore it was genuine. I mean, every, everything points to it. Everything I've been taught. Tell you what I'll do. I'll help you cut your losses. What? Well, I could be doing with that up in my bedroom. Come in handy cold nights. <laughs> I'll buy it off you. How much for? Three pound ten. Three pound ten? He's worth twice that much. Four pound. Six pound ten. Four pound fifteen, that's my last offer. Oh, I'll tell you what. Four pounds seventeen and six without a po. <laughs> what are you going to do with the po? I'm going to take it down to the GLC and take appreciation classes and show it to the teacher. He'll be ever so interested. Now I'm going to break it right over the bleeding teacher's head. Good night. <laughs>